If you're thinking about becoming an appointment center in 2024 and really just creating the life for yourself and your family that you never knew was possible, you need to watch this video all the way through. Now, not only am I going to be going over these three absolutely mandatory scripts that you need to know to be successful in this industry and becoming a high paid appointment center, but we're also going to go over a live DM conversation so you can see the back and forth between a prospect and one of our appointment centers so you can see exactly how it's done. Let's jump into it. Okay, so let's jump into the ultimate guide to remote closing episode episode three of the free course series. And this is technically episode two of the appointment setting. And this is going to be the last episode of appointment setting. We'll do some more advanced stuff down the road, but just so you know where we are in the series. Um, also, second link down in the description below, you can go ahead and grab this document as well. So you can follow along. Um, the scripts are on this document. So you can save this and use them on your own uh, sales calls or appointment setting calls. So in terms of the table of contents, what we're going to do, uh, first off, uh, the first two, right, review and overview, um, these are going to be very quick, less than 30 seconds, what an appointment setter is and who it's for if you've never been here before. We're going to break it down and then also the overview of where we are within the sales process. It's very important to understand where we are in the process so you know which of these three scripts to go through and utilize. So we're going to do the outbound call script. So this, if you understand this script, like you will become an absolute machine and make a ton of money, these companies will really like literally beg to work with you. Also, we're gonna go over the messenger script. So this is how to revive the people that don't respond to certain messages, or let's say they no-show a call. These are gonna be some things you can copy and paste. And then also our DM setting, plus the examples that I was telling you. So again, the copy and paste these same messages and set appointments like wildfire. And I'm really excited to show you uh, some of the, the DM conversations. So I was going through some of the ones that we are going to show, and I think you guys will get a ton out of that. So again, make sure to stay to the very end of this video for the entire context, because if not, and you miss one thing, there's a really good chance that you will be super lost. So make sure to stay to the end. Okay, so that's stuff out of the way. Let's go to the review. So what is an appointment setter and who is it for? We're going through this very quickly. Influencers out there, right? They have an advertisement on TikTok, on Facebook and Instagram, wherever it is, is they have an advertisement that leads to usually a video or a webinar or some sort of product. They're going to, in this section right here, they're gonna put in their name, phone number, and email to access said webinar or video. As an appointment setter, you're gonna do one of two things. You're going to outbound call these people, which we're going over the outbound call script today. You're gonna to call these people that are here, or you're going to talk to the people that after this webinar set this phone call, is there's usually a little section here where you as an appointment setter would go in and uh, make sure that they're a good fit, essentially, right? So they usually, after the webinar, they'll fill out an application. You're gonna have the calls with those applicants that have already filled out the application and have booked a call with you. So as an appointment setter, Again, they're inbound, they're on your calendar, and you can talk to them to make sure that they are a good fit to then go to have the phone call with the closer so that they can convert it into a paying client. So again, appointment center projected earnings is anywhere from three to 5%, depending on the offer. Um, and offers range anywhere from 3000 to $50,000. So 3% of whatever the offer price, that is what you're gonna get every single sale. Massive disclaimer here at the bottom, always make it. These are just examples, right? This is not, these, these numbers should not be construed as like guaranteed income results at all. Just understand what is possible. Now let's talk about where we are in the sales process. So in the last video, if you didn't watch it, obviously, check out, this is a playlist, so you can check out the last video. Um, last time we talked about how to talk to these people, the people that come through inbound applications that are vetted. What we're gonna talk about today is the outbound call and the messenger script, as well as the DM setter script was a little bit different than the messenger script here. Now, as a setter, you gotta remember, there are four main opportunities to create these sales calls. And the context here is massively important because each different one of these is going to be in a different frame and a different mindset. So last conversation or last video, we talked about the inbound applications. These ones are gonna be the warmest prospects. So to be honest, they're usually the easiest to convert into the next call. Um, so again, watch that last video if you didn't. Um, and we're gonna cover the outbound calls, the messenger and the DM setting. So with the outbound calls, you're basically gonna be doing outreach to someone that has either bought something from you or from the prospect or from the, you know, the owner of the company. And then, or they've either like opted in for a specific free training or something along the line. So there's the interest there. They just haven't gotten to the point where they've booked the call yet. We're also gonna go over the messenger script, which is basically same to the above. This just goes through messenger, so through text, through, uh, you know, email, through text, email. Yeah, through DMs basically. And the DM setting is usually going to be the lowest intent, but still converts really high because of the, thor the authority of the influencer. So let's say, you're working with a, a business owner that has 50,000 followers. There's that parasocial relationship or that's, um, what's the word, the celebrity effect that takes into place. So it becomes pretty simple for you to convert them into a call because they're like, oh my gosh, I'm talking to this guy that has 50,000 followers. Of course, I'm gonna talk to him, but then they end up talking to the closer, right? And the framing is 
you're not like doing a bait and switch like you're letting them know that now again i'm giving you all of the scripting word for word for every single one of these scenarios so make sure to stick around and we're going to do the three of them now so first my favorite because these are the ones that you can really just attack if you got a name phone or email like you need to be the one like hammering these conversations you know multiple per hour like a hundred an hour if you can based on the amount of people that you get in contact with so before we get into the script you got to make sure that you always double dial and what that means is essentially you are going to call right let's say you have a name phone or email you're going to call the person on their phone and then what's going to happen is they're either not going to answer or it might ring like two or three times and then it goes dark right it basically hangs up that usually means either one they don't have service or number two they see an unknown phone call on their you know on their phone they're like i don't know who this is i'm going to end it I don't know about you, I usually don't answer unknown numbers. It, is, it just is what it is, especially if it's not coming from my area code. So this little secret here is you're basically going to, again, you dial, right? You call them. If they don't answer, you're going to wait a second and you're going to call them back again. And you're going to call them back again, not saying anything different. But what happens is psychologically is they get another call right after that. And they're immediately thinking like, huh, like maybe this is important. I don't know this number, but they're calling me back twice. Like, Maybe, yeah, maybe I just got to, you know, maybe I should answer it and they'll answer it. And as soon as you get them on the call, you're, you're free to go really just straight into the script. So, um, that being said, if they don't answer on the second call, then you leave a voicemail, but you never want to leave a voicemail on the first call that you make because you could just double dial and maybe get them on the phone. So we'll go over the voicemail script here in a second after uh, the outbound call script. So keep in mind, again, the last video is going to go more in depth around like the exact scripting of what you're going to do because outbound calls, this is specifically so that you can set that other call. That is the inbound call script, right? So you can dive a little bit more into it with these outbound calls is you don't have as much time because you're usually, you know, you're, you're reaching out and they might be, you know, at the grocery store, they might be in their car. They might be, you know, not have a ton of time. So really all you're trying to do is slightly verify like their income and ask a couple of these questions. With all that being said, let's go into the script here. So again, outbound caller script, you basically going to call if they're going to answer, you're going to say, Hey, is this, um, is this John? And they'll say, yeah, it's John. I say, okay, cool. Aaron here. I'm um, just calling about that $47 uh, outbound mastery course that's uh, that you purchased from from Cole. So again, I'm framing and I'm basically what I'm trying to do as quickly as possible is remind them what they did and also give them some context so that they like they're not like, I don't know who Aaron is, right? So it's like, hey, I was just called about that, you know, that $47 outbound mastery course that you bought yesterday. Um, and you don't say because I was going to say, does that ring a bell? You don't want to say that rings a bell is because you want to speak with a certainty that they should know who you are, right? You need that confidence because you're giving them an out, right? They say, does that ring a bell? They can easily say no. And then you've dug yourself into a hole. So it's like, hey, it's Aaron here. Uh, you know, it's called about that $47 outbound mastery course uh, that you purchased from from Cole. And then you wait for them. And they're going to say, oh, yeah, if it wasn't a, a course, right? Let's say that it was just a, I don't know, a free masterclass or let's say a, a video, right? You can say, hey, it was called about uh, the video that, uh, that we sent over via Instagram about how to land your next client with uh with remote closing uh you know it, it was from i think cole cole made it right and then you just present it like that so it doesn't always have to be the uh the purchase so after you ask this you know question do they get it they're gonna say yeah you know that was me i'll say cool so i just want to check in with you really quickly and and see if we're able to get that logins i know it's easy to lose things in the inbox these days we're able to get able to get access so this is with the assumption um you know we we give out free courses right? So if they have a free course that they opted into, I'm just making sure that they got access. So this, you can switch it to, you might have to switch it up a little bit and you can say, Hey, you know, just want to make sure that you got, you got access to that. You're able to, to watch it. Okay. Um, we're, we know we're able to get access and then, you know, cause you're really just trying to figure out if they like watch the content, did they, um, you know, what was like their thought of it, that type of thing, but just confirming that they got access because here's where the law of recipro reciprocity comes into play is essentially you've given them something. So now naturally they're like, okay, I got to give this guy some time because I got something from them. Right. Um, so he said, okay. And I'm not sure, uh, sorry, I got to get to my, my scripting mode. So, okay. And you know, I'm not sure if you, you read this one, um, this one, the sales page, but including your purchase was actually a training from what a Cole's paid masterminds. Has anyone reached out to you about that yet? So I kind of messed up the, the scripting here as I was reading through, but basically what you're saying is like, Hey, you know, I'm not sure that you went through the page that was on or, Hey, not sure if you, you know, really digested the information's on there, but, um, you know, I want to go and shoot you over a, you know, another training, right? So you're just adding on the value that you can, 
you know, that you can get you bring that you bring to them. And it's also saying, you know, hey, has anyone reached out to you about that? Is like I'm here to give them again another thing. So it's that that law of reciprocity. And I'm kind of dangling a carrot in front of them. I'm like, hey, we got this other training. You want it? Like, hey, you want it? And then like we don't give it to them right away, but we're gonna ask them some questions. So it's like, so we'll say, oh no, you know, I didn't get that. Or yes, I didn't. I was like, okay, so you know, the reason you did, didn't get it immediately is just because we have a ton of stuff and we want to make sure that you get something that is actually like relevant to your situation and useful. So, um, you know, they can really help you in your business right now. Is that something that's, um, that, you know, that I can get over to you? And they're going to say yes. And I'd say, okay, gotcha. So, you know, what do you think is the biggest challenge in your business right now? And based on that, I can pair you with something that would be helpful for you, right? So two important caveats that I would, I would have within this conversation is towards the end when I say, gotcha, so what do you, uh, or so is that something I can get to you? Um, and then we say, gotcha, so what's your biggest challenge? When, you, when you're saying that specific thing is you are now transitioning into the previous script that we went over and then you can go into the entire thing. The only caveat to that though is when you jump into these questions is because there's, there's a benefit in doing this way, right? Sometimes you'll ask like, hey, do you have some time to like answer some questions right now? The problem with asking that, right? And I think a lot of people do that. The problem with asking that question is you're giving them the option to jump off the call. When what we're trying to do is we need to get the pain, we need to get the the where they're looking to go and their current situation, right? Because if we can get those things, it's really simple to sell them onto the next call. So when we're in this situation, is just keep in mind is you might get some pushback sometimes when you're saying like, hey, when you go into like, so what is your biggest challenge? Um, because they, you know, they might be out and about, right? They might not have expected this call in the first place. So just go in with the expectation that you want to present this and just go straight into the question and assume like, hey, I can go through this in five minutes anyway. I'm just going to go for it. But understand that if they're like, dude, I'm like really busy right now, make sure to set another call with them uh, for, let's say, later that day. It's like, okay, cool. No worries all, dude. Uh, would love to jump back on with you so I can make sure to get that training over to you. Um, you know, when do you have, let's say, you know, 20 minutes, uh, later on today, I have, you know, this time and this time, which one works best for you present that to them. They'll say, you know, whatever. Okay, cool. No worries. Uh, do you feel like there's anything else that's going to get in the way of you jumping in that call? No, getting like kind of the double dot tie down there. And then, yeah, and then you should be good. And then, you know, you, you have the other conversation and then go into the triage call script that we talked about in the, um, in the last video. So yeah. And then after this, you know, you go to that other script you'd give them over the training and you would set the call with the closer if they're a good fit, right? If they're a good fit with um, within that. So this is for the free opt-in. So I know I kind of like put it all in one, but here's, we can just go through this for you guys so you can hear it again. So it's like, hey, you know, what's going on, John? And they'd say, hey, and say, hey, it's uh, it's Aaron here. It's calling about the ultimate guide to hiring a, uh, you know, an A player sales rep uh, that you downloaded from, from Cole. They'd say, yeah, you know, I got that. I said, just wanted to make sure um, you were able to access it. I know that, you know, sometimes tech messes up these days and, you know, emails, emails crazy too. So just want to make sure that, that you got over that. They'd say, yeah, I got that. I said, okay, cool. So I'm not sure if you read uh, this on the landing page or in the email that you were supposed to get a training from one of Cole's Pays Masterminds. Um, has anyone reached out to you about that yet? So you can see it's very, very similar, right? It's, it's the only difference is this first line, right? As opposed to the $37 thing, it's the, um, it's the free thing. So you would jump back in, right? The reason you didn't get it immediately is just because we have a ton of stuff that we want to make sure that you got something that is actually relevant and useful to you where you are in business right now. Um, is that something that I can get over to you? They'd say, yeah. I say, okay, gotcha. So what do you think is the biggest challenge for you right now? And based on that, I could pair you with something that would be helpful. So again, you're trying to figure out, okay, I want to, is this something that you want? Yes. Okay, perfect. You already framed that there's a ton of stuff that you can get over to them, right? So it only makes sense through this framing that you need to ask these questions in order to give them the training that is going to be best for them, right? So instead of just saying like, hey, can I like ask you a bunch of questions? It's like, no, you don't want to do that because it's like, it just seems very, uh, you know, it just seems very one-sided. So if you just be like, hey, I got a ton of training. I just don't want to send everything over to you. If I just ask you a couple of questions, um, you know, it just based on that, I can pair you with something that's, uh, you know, it's, it's helpful for you right now. So keep in mind, in this call, and we talked about this on, you know, the triage call script as well, is the goal for you as an appointment setter is to not sell the product. This is a massive, massive, massive mistake that I see a lot of newer appointment setters make is they, you know, they learn more about the offer and they learn more about, you know, how it can help them and things like that. But the problem with that is, is they don't necessarily need 
to sell the product on this thing, right? All they need to do is sell the next call, right? Sell the call with the closer. For example, they could come up with questions like, so like, what do you guys actually do? And I say, hey, that's a great question. Um, you know, honestly, the best plan of action is gonna be to actually get you, you know, talking to one of my right-hand guys. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know a ton on, you know, I have, maybe I wouldn't say that. I would say, you know, to be honest with you, we don't have that much call on this call. Um, you know, so that much time on, on this conversation right now, um, would love to get you paired up with, uh, you know, my right hand guy, John or Cole or whatever the name is, and they can really give you the full rundown, um, based on, you know, your specific situation. Is that cool? Right. And, uh, yeah, and then you just go into the, into the next question so that they can't, they can't come back at you. So, um, so again, so you don't want to answer any of those questions always to deflect it onto the next call so that they have the incentive to jump on the next call. Same thing with like price same thing with all these things it's always like hey great question you know honestly everything we do here is completely custom so i don't have a specific uh a price point for you right now because i just don't i just know don't know a ton about you or the business and where you're looking to take things so again with all that being said all you need to do is get on this call and you just figure out the pain current situation desired situation that is it everything else needs to be on the next call um, of course, in the video, and actually, if you click uh, this video right here on the screen in the document, uh, second link in the description, by the way, is uh, you will go over to the full training where it's going to bring you to that script. And then, you know, I say pain, current situation desired, but you're also going to chunk down into each of those questions, which you would know what chunking down is when you watch that video. So go check that out um, either after this video and let's get to the next part. So next script on here, I, I just mentioned it, but click the second link in the description and it'll bring you to this document. So you can physically copy and paste this because this is for the text, the voicemail and the email that you would send over to the customers after or potential customers, right? The prospects when you, uh, send the, the information over or send the products over. So say, Hey, John, whatever the name is. Hey, John, this is Aaron with insert company. Do you remember the insert product you purchased from us? Reason I was calling earlier is it doesn't look like you got one of the bonuses and purchased. It was a private training from one of, you know, Cole, John, whoever influencers, one of their high end masterminds. Can you confirm? Also, you can use something like, hey, John, you know, it's it's Cole or it's Aaron from insert insert company. Um, did you just purchase the product masterclass, whatever? Let me know if you have two seconds. Just want to make sure you're taken care of. So really what you're trying to do here is a couple things. Number one is give them a reminder because sometimes like emails are weird. People are opted into it for a million different things, especially now with Black Friday, people are getting crazy amounts of emails. So if you can text them, if you can leave them a voicemail, if you can email them, all these things are going to stack on top of each other. And when they see your name, right, if you're Aaron, the appointment setter, is they're going to see an Aaron text me and Aaron sent me a voicemail and Aaron sent me an email and it's going to consistently keep you on top of the, uh, the inbox. The benefit of doing this through text as well is a lot of times again when people opt in they're going to leave their name their phone number and their email so a little hack that you can use or not even really a hack it's pretty self-explanatory is when you send them this text is because you were asking hey can i give you this thing is if they want that thing which they probably do because they've opted recently into the other thing is when you ask them hey do you want this thing they're going to respond guess what if they respond you now know that that is a valid phone number so you call them immediately. You literally call them as soon as they text you back because you know they're on their phone, you know they want the thing. So it's gonna, it's not like a weird random cold call, right? It's like they're telling you that they want the thing. So it's like, hey, what's going on, man? Uh, was just literally just texting you right now. I'm making sure that you got access to, and then you just go into the script that I mentioned above. So as you can see, it's as long as you get these scripts down, I mean, I've done these probably thousands of times at this point. It's like, it's ingrained in the back of my brain. So it's like when you get this down and you go through these for a certain amount of times, it just becomes second nature to you. So that's the text and the voicemail uh, script. All right, so let's jump into my favorite, which uh, the reason I say that is I honestly think that being a DM setter is one of the simplest things in this world. Like it is the simplest way, in my opinion, to create income because all you're doing is just talking to people that want to buy the product like it's it's so dumb easy and your job isn't to sell the product right your job is just to set more appointments and if you can just get really good at setting appointments and asking the right questions it's like you'll see in this live uh, breakdown here in a little bit is it's just it's like taking candy from a baby like it's so so simple so let's go over the message flow so here's the key pieces to get from the dm conversations and uh, we'll walk through kind of a, a script here it's it's more of like a script slash framework um, when we do the live, um, when we do the live, when I show you those, some live conversations, you'll see what the script is. So key pieces. So the main thing that we want to get here, and I talked about right, pain, desired uh, situation, current situation, but more importantly than that is you want to figure out like, you know, 
do they have a job, right? Because we're selling programs, we're selling high ticket programs. So they need to have either some sort of job, but if they don't have a job, then they need to have some sort of like, if they maybe they have savings, right? Because if they don't have money, then they can't jump in. And it's just not really worth not only your time, but not only worth like their time, right? Wasting their time. So, you know, do they have a job? Do they have some sort of pain? So we basically talked about that already. Are they running away from something? So this is kind of a chunking down piece of the pain, right? If their pain is, I have a, you know, I, I don't like working a job. They're running away from the job, right? They're running away from the people they don't like there. They're running away from uh, low paychecks, right? So there's, it's kind of a part of the pain. And then we talked about this, right? Do they have big goals and can they not get there? I mean, can't get there with their current situation. This is key because if they're telling you when you're asking these questions of like, you know, what are, you know, where are you looking to take things? I want to make $10,000 a month. And then they say, okay, but my current job and you say, well, okay, can you hit your current goals with that job? And they say, well, no, it's not possible. That is an immediate way to be like, okay, perfect. So it makes 100% sense. If you can't reach the goals that you're telling yourself that you want to hit, and it's physically impossible within your current situation, let's just have a quick 10 to 15 minute conversation. We can break it down. So I already mentioned this, right? The goal with the DMs is to find the reason they should get on the call and as little and back and forth as possible. So the last thing you want to do is have, you know, a ton of back and forth and 15 messages going, right? You want to break it down to like, you'll see in some of the examples, it's like three or four messages or three and four back and forths tops. Sometimes there needs to be a little bit more convincing for lack of a better word, but for the most part, you just want to keep it short, right? What had you enter? Well, let's just jump into the script because here we go. With these scripts, where they're usually going to be coming from is keywords from the DMs. So within the DM conversations, um, usually what the influencer will do is they'll post in their story and they'll say, hey, I'm looking to partner with five new people this month to help them each, you know, insert end result, whatever their offer does. So they're going to say, you know, is DM me keyword uh, DM, right? So they send the keyword DM to the person. Now you know that they're interested. So you're just going to either through automation or through you physically going through the people that sent the word DM. All you do is say, hey, John, what had you, you know, saw you DM this keyword? What had you interested about remote closing or what had you interested about weight loss? What had you interested about making money with crypto? Whatever like the, the offer is. So then the cool part about this is because they're interested is they're going to give you the entire rundown and their life story. Usually what they'll say is like, you know, I'm currently, I'm, I want to do it because I'm working this job. I hate this job. I can't provide for my family. I want to do blah, blah, blah. And it's like they, a lot of times it would just give you like all of these different things that, uh, that's going to help you. Right. So based on their, their response, they might say something like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working this job and I don't really like it. Right. So then you can say, okay, gotcha. So what do you do for work now? And the byproduct of this answer is figuring out what we talked about a second ago is do they have a job? Uh, gotcha. Why do you want to make more money? So they might be saying, you know, I'm not making what I, what I want to make. And you say, okay, gotcha. So why do you want to make more money? So we're answering two things here. Number one is we're kind of asking how much money you're making. And we're also asking, what are you trying to run to, right? What is the goal of making more money? Um, you can say, gotcha. Why are you looking to get out of that? Right? So they're saying, yeah, I'm working the job. I just don't really love it, whatever. And you're asking, okay, so why do you want to get out of that? So what are they running away from? And what is the pain? So you can see all these follow-up questions are to get to figure out and, and really dive into and get these answered questions, these questions answered, because if we can answer these questions, it'll be very simple to transition them into a conversation. Um, again, gotcha. What, you know, would ideally, what ideally would you be making per month if you could? So it's kind of sneaky with this one too, is you can ask them that. And based on the way that they answer that question, you can financially qualify. So for example, if they say, you know, ideally how much you want to be making per month, and this goes to race, right? Let's say ideally how much you want to be making. And they say, you know, I would just really love to make $2,000 a month in my eyes. It's like, you're only getting paid to like, what are you doing? Are you, you know, are you working fast food? Are you only working part-time? You know, like, what are you doing to where your, your goal is to only hit 2k a month. And then you have the opposite side where they're like, I just want to make 90 grand a month. And then I would say, okay, gotcha. So like, I guess just curious, like, are you making close to that now? Like, what's the breakdown? They're like, no, I'm actually making one. And it's like, it's kind of just becomes an outlandish goal. So what it allows you to do is really reverse engineer, um, you know, reverse engineer the situation and see, you know, where they currently are. So as long as you can check these boxes off of them answering these and getting the answer to those four questions, really, where are you now? Where do you want to be? What's holding you back? And, you know, the pain essentially, then you would go into book the triage. So if you get all the questions that you need, you just say, okay, got it. So 
based on all that, I think it makes the most sense to just jump on a quick 15 minute chat to see how we can help you out, if at all. Is that something that you're open to? So again, we're looking at this, this here saying, is that something that you're open to, right? As opposed to like, let's book a call right now. It's like, hey, is that something that you're at least open to, to doing? They're gonna respond yes. And then you're gonna send a booking link. So usually with the company that you're working with, they're gonna give you a, a booking link. So it's just a, you know, Calendly or, or One's Hub or whatever it is. You're gonna send that link to them. And this is important. Let me know when you book so I can make sure that it comes through and with what email. So the reason this is important is because you want, like what this kind of does is you're basically saying, book it in right now without saying, hey, can you book it in right now? You know what I mean? So it's like, hey, let me know when you book so I can make sure it comes through. You can even add something in here like, you know, to make sure the, the, that it comes through. Uh, tech is kind of weird sometimes. So it's like you're giving a reason to say that almost. Um, and then with what email? So you can cross-reference what email comes through. But again, more importantly, you're just like giving another reason as to why they need to do it right now is because you want to make sure that they get it. And then last couple things here is, you know, send the homework video. So the reason there's asterisks is here, asterisks is because uh, sometimes they won't have a homework video. Um, a lot of companies call it like a pre-call video. What it does, it just sets the expectation of what they can expect on that call, sets the expectations of what to expect. Yeah, on that conversation. And it's basically like, hey, show up. Here's a little bit about what we do. Here's our case study. So it gets them excited for it. Now, um, so then you would send this, right? Can you check this video before you hop on the call? It will give you a quick rundown of what remote closing is all about. So sometimes it'll do, you know, tell them a little bit more about the offer. Um, it could do a lot of different things, but if they don't have a homework video, that's fine. Um, and then what's also crucial is keeping conversation within these DMs so that let's say time comes around where they don't show up is you can then come to the DMs and be like, Hey, where are you type thing? And you can follow up through, through here. So Overall, that makes sense. Let's jump over to the live appointment setting now. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. All right, so as we're going through these appointment center conversations, I want you to just remember how simple of a process this is because these are people that are sending us keywords inbound and we are responding to them is they're already there wanting to talk about how to get started with appointment setting or closing. So just keep that in mind as we're going through here. So um, they saw, you can see a, uh, a video that I posted and they sent in a keyword. So I said, okay, Hey, uh, Sasuke, thanks for reaching out. Um, you know, more than happy to help out. Cool if I ask you a few questions to point you in the right direction. So of course they say, you know, yes. And they say, sure, right? So what we're doing is we're asking permission that we can go in and ask questions. So once you do that, it's like game over. We can, you know, we can send the questions. Um, and then the first question, like we said uh, in the scripting, you know, what had you interested with remote closing? So uh, the cool part about this again, is they give like their entire life story around you know why like where they are where they want to be right when we go back to the scripting of when just figuring out what is their pain points what are they trying to get away from you know what are are, are their uh you know current situation desired situation so we can further understand them but we don't really have to pry a ton because a lot of times they will give these really long drawn out answers so we say okay got it so what are you currently doing for work um or are you only running your beauty brand so this is uh fantastic this is called active listening. The last thing you want to do, or I guess active reading in this case, the last thing that you want to do is just copy and paste these exact questions, right? Because they just feel like it's a bot. So the more that you can incorporate different things that they are, they're actively saying to you and then put them back in front of them, it becomes more of just a genuine conversation. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, so that's that. It says, yes, running my band. Um, you have some sales center experience, right? And they say, I do about two years of experience. So this person has experience. So the next question here is, so is this something that you are looking to do on the side or do you want to replace your current income and do a full time? This is a great question because what we're trying to do is figure out if this person is going to be fully bought into this thing, right? Are they like just looking to like dabble on this or do they like actually want to make this a full time thing, right? Because if they don't, then it might not be the best thing for us to bring them forward into our program because if they're not committed, they're probably not going to see success essentially. So just keep, keep that all in mind. So again, this is, um, you know, this is, this is a good question. Um, I have a lot of time on my hands. Honestly, I wish to learn some skills and start earning now that there have been a good uh, gap of almost six months since I left my job. I don't mind doing this full time. So again, they're qualifying and they're saying, okay, cool. I want to do this. So what's the goal in terms of money? So again, figuring out what their goal is, where they currently are, like what is their, you know, do they want to do a full time or part time? And then they say, you know, I want to do one to 2K a month. Um, I'm a fast learner. Once I'm familiar with it, I can aim higher. 
So at this point within the conversation, remember, we've gotten, okay, we, we financially qualified and said, okay, they have a job or at least they're making some sort of income. Um, also, you know, do they have experience? This isn't gonna be always a question because this is mostly just off of what we had gotten up here, right, in, in this part. And then this is, so is, is this something you wanna do full-time or part-time? So again, the only reason this question is a thing is because they, they said that they're already doing stuff in the past. And then there's a goal. So we have those things. Where are you now? Where do you want to be? What's holding you back? And then he goes straight into it, right? And then the other cool, or the, the funny thing here, right? He's like, actually, do you have five to 10 minutes to hop on a quick call? Uh, tomorrow, save you the carpal tunnel. So really the, the main reason of that is to make a joke to give them a reason why we should jump on a call so they don't feel pressured into jumping on the call, right? And then he basically just gave them the times. They booked the call in and set the appointment. Okay, so here is another great example, guys. Like this is just reading through these makes me excited because it's just so freaking simple this is a cheat code like a hack in life <laughs> to be able to uh to do this so basically we go through they say you know inbound keyword again they want the thing so we say hey fabio thanks for reaching out just for context what had you potentially considering becoming a remote closer and what do you do full-time for work now so a little bit of a change in the way ask the question but very similar right getting a lot of uh the same context out there so he said hey aaron work remotely for a software company in the vacation rental industry mainly deal uh, with the onboarding of, uh, of accounts, training and management once they are fully activated with software. So this person actually would be pretty solid if you know he already has experience. So I'm looking for extra income as my hours are quite flexible. Can you expand a little bit more on the, what the role is offering? So he said, hey, you know, sorry, it took a second to respond. Not hiringly currently, but we're happy to help. Cool, if I ask you a few, few questions. So he was just basically saying, didn't want to set the wrong expectations of this person. Like, you know, they're saying, um, you know, can you expand a little bit on the role that I'm offering? We're not necessarily offering roles to to everyone, right? We're bringing them into our program to teach them. So, um, so yeah. So they said basically, you know, can we ask a few questions? They said, sure, go ahead. Very, very simple. It's not something where you're reaching out to people that have no idea who you are, right? It's there. These are people that actually want the thing. So they're like more than happy to go through and answer the question. So, still working for the software company, I assume. So again, using context from previously, they say yes, I am. So ideally, what are you looking for for the remote closing compared to that? So again, trying to figure out what is the pain and if they're reaching out because of this, they, they, there is some sort of pain, right? And that pain can be one of two things. It can be that they need to make more money, right? Or it's an unfulfilled desire, right? They could be making, let's say they're making 10,000 a month, but they want to make 20,000. So just very important to, to break that down. So looking for extra income. So again, this is their goal and also their pain, right? Because they might not be making a month enough. I've worked in sales in the past and I believe I have the skills to close deals. So again, they have an unfulfilled desire. They're not making enough, but they think they have the skills in order to do so. So I mean, what is a, uh, so mean, what does a remote closure does? So basically cl clarifying questions. I know I'm going through this relatively quickly, but feel free to, you know, pause this and, and wait. So how much would you need to make consistently every month with remote closing to replace your full-time income and be able to do this full-time? So this is just qualifying, asking, hey, in in a, a kosher we're well not kosher in a more uh political way is how much money do you make right so i'm currently making 6k a month but having three kids uh this is far from being ideal so there's the pain right boom easy there's the pain definitely like uh i definitely like to see if we can help um actually you have five to ten minutes to hop on a quick zoom call um a save you the carpal tunnel so again same uh, little joke it's uh you know it's really easy to put in there and just you know this is this is decreasing the chances of them saying no to a phone call, right? It's saying like, hey, do you just got like five to 10 minutes to jump on? Um, you know, my goal is to connect with you with my right-hand man. He works really closely with all of our clients. So basically going and setting him with the, um, you know, with the client. So I think what ended up happening with this one is you just had to push it off until Monday. And, uh, you know, they obviously get the appointments at. All right, guys, so jump into the last one here. We have Katrina and it looks like, so she sent in remotes and same thing here goes. I, I know it's like monotonous, but I just want to show you that it's literally the exact same thing over and over. And if you just copy and paste and have just a little bit of brain power, you got this. It's good. I believe in you. <laughs> so here we go. So, hey, Katrina, thanks for reaching out. Uh, just for context, what has you potentially considering becoming a remote closer? And what do you do uh, for full-time work right now? Um, so they answered, I'm looking for a secondary income, currently a sales consultant for a large liquor distributor company. So really great, you know, situation. And I mean, honestly, Oh, I see what's happening here. These are like follow-ups from, shoot, that's funny. Okay. <clears throat> so the next it says, okay, I'm looking for a secondary income. 
So then they said, I'm looking for a secondary income, currently a sales consultant for a large liquor distribution company. So uh, came back in and says, hey, Katrina, sorry, it took a while to reply. See what you mean. So ideally, what would you be looking for for remote closing compared to sales consultancy? So very, very good job here is listening. Okay, what did you do before? And then bringing that into the conversation. So they're looking for money, freedom, and future. This is all ideal situation, right? Where they want to be. I mean, my goal is to start investing. The cost of living is insanity and I want to be able to do it. So what we're getting here is two things. We're getting pain, right? Cost of living, living is insane. They're not making enough money and they ultimately want to have more money, more freedom, and more future. So got it. I definitely see, um, like to see if we can help. How much would you need, need to take to consistently every month with remote closing to replace your full-time income? So again, we're saying replace full-time income. Easy way of saying, hey, how much are you making, right? And they said, well, I mean, if I was making 10K a month, I'd walk away. I think anyone would, right? So just, you know, maybe not the best way to respond. Um, so, oh, this is per oh, dude, I, I gotta, I'm gonna give a, this guy a freaking pat on the back because he's doing, he's doing phenomenal is, so again, the, the reason for asking this question is, you know, basically trying to get in a, in a nice way, how much money do you make? So they didn't really answer the question with this. They said, I mean, I was, if I was making 10 K a month, I'd walk away. So he goes in to double down and says, so you're currently making 10 K a month, question mark, right? Just trying to see how big the bridge is you want to cross. No, I'm not. That's where I'd like to be, though. With what I do, my op opportunities are uncapped. It's all about what effort I put into it. I could scale it over time. So didn't really get the answer from it, but we do know that they're not making 10K a month. So you don't need like a perfect number every time, right? You just need like a ballpark to figure out where they are. And, you know, when, when someone was saying like, if I made 10K, I'd walk away, you could assume that they're doing probably close to that, maybe like six, it's like five, six, seven K a month, because if they weren't right, they'd probably say like, oh, like I'd walk away if I was making three K a month. Right. Cause, and then that tells us like they're making like a thousand bucks a month or 2000 bucks a month. So again, just having a little bit of brain power and knowing exactly like what to say and, and to pivot what's uh, what he realized is like, okay, cool. We have enough questions. They're employed. They have a desire and we know their current situation. So went in and went ahead and connected. So my goal is to connect it with my right hand man. Um, works really closely with all of our clients. So goes in and books the call. So she said, okay, I could another day. I got swamped, um, but overall just getting more questions. I, I'm the only reason I'm not going and continuing is because we have like phone numbers and emails and stuff that I don't want to like dox people actually. So hopefully this is helpful. And uh, this is, yeah, this is how simple it can be to set appointments literally from your cell phone. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I think I had a lot of fun making that and I think you get a ton out of it. So next up on the series, uh, next couple of videos, we're gonna do a full remote closing appointment setting, or I'm sorry, a full remote closing course, how to land your first remote closing and appointment setting role, objection handling jujitsu, advanced sales techniques, and then how to ascend even past remote closer. So appointment setter, closer, sales manager, or we call it a sales integrator is that next step. And you can make more money without taking a single sales call, which we're gonna talk a lot about that. So. Click the video that's on screen to check out the next video in the series. If it's not made yet, then obviously there's not going to be a video up there, but if you want to go ahead and hit those goals quicker and not have to wait for the free course series. There's a masterclass down below as well as right now, depending on when you're watching this after the 27th of November, we're not doing the black Friday thing anymore. So right now you can take advantage of black Friday, uh, for, you know, while supplies last basically. And, uh, depending on when you're watching this, this link will be a different link for the masterclass after that certain point. So first link down in the description as well. And then on screen on this document, second link down in the description. So make sure you go check that out. Aaron here from the RCA team. See you guys in the next one. Talk soon.